Hi Libra, this is Jeffrey, this is Rack Color. This is your uh, three card reading for December 2020. <clears throat> Please like, subscribe, share. Uh, press the bell for notifications. Bring 30 minute readings for $30. And all the information is below. Additionally, if you're on Instagram and you'd like something very, uh, very pretty feed to follow. I have a very pretty feed to follow and it is under red color. It's my artwork. Inspiration. It's very cool. So if you're up for it, I could, I would appreciate the support. Okay. Now, uno mas. And here we go. One, two, three. Ooh, very interesting. Wow. Okay. We get three big children. Okay. High priestess. Priestess is fascinating. What a fascinating card this is. Um, she is Isis. This is Isis. She gets the secret. She either, there are two things she can do. She can either hold the secret or she could reveal the secret. She's either keeping the light. She's Isis. She's behind the veil. So it's either one or two ways with this card. It's like either she reveals the light or she keeps it to herself. It's a mystery. Then you get the tower. Disruption, big disruption, big disruption. Then you get the moon. Delusion, delusion. I'm gonna throw more. Well, before I throw more, the tower is like one of the most uncomfortable cards in the deck. And, it, and it's really about something coming out of the blue and everything turning everything on its head, okay? So perhaps, you know, the secret was revealed. But then you get the moon. And the moon is really about, it's a lot about a lot of things, but in its most basic sense, um, it's a mysterious path. And so you have two mystery cards here, right? Two mystery cards, two like unknown, like, and then you have, um, So, you know, okay. So let's say something happened or uh, some, some, like, let's say some, there was a weird thing at the place you're working out with money that was being hidden. Let's just say, and then like the, you know, everything has to close, they went bankrupt. And you're like, oh my God. And you're thinking I'll never work again, illusion. Oh, this is the most awful thing that happened, illusion. Um, you know, sometimes, a lot of times, you know, six months later, it's like, oh, thank God. You know, I had a business and it all, it, it didn't, it wasn't tower, but it, it just dissolved into nothing. And as it was happening, it was just the most awful thing. And um, it was like, it was almost like pieces of me were being taken with it. And then I had to like really acknowledge that it was done finally, <clears throat> which I had an inkling of, but it's almost like I needed the universe to come in and say, it's done, it's over, we're done. Um, and then, you know, out of that, I had to build something. I had no choice. And six months after that, it was like, you know, 
even though I had a lot invested in it, like emotionally and financially and blah, 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 Lee, there was part of me that hated it. It was part of me that like, I was um, working so hard and doing things that I just didn't really want to do. And, you know, it was a way to make money, but I was miserable. So I, I used to make t-shirts and I mean, when I was designing them, it was great. But what ended up happening is because I, I do one of a kind, right? And um, I would make a one of a kind, but then somebody would like stores would want the same one over and over and over again. And I was like, so bored. It was like, this isn't creative. This is like being uh, like working in a factory, you know, as opposed to like being able to make something new every day. And, um, and then there was problems with payments and, you know, it just went on and on and on, you know, like it just went on and on and on. There were so many problems. So like when I finally went six months later, I was really grateful. It was like, but I was only able to see it afterwards. Right. I was only able, hindsight is 2020, 20, right. That kind of thing. So, you know, thinking, Oh, this is the end, the absolute end of everything ever in the whole wide world. <clears throat> you're not seeing things clearly. This is about seeing things by the light of the moon as opposed to seeing things by the light of the sun. So when you look at things in moonlight, they appear larger, they appear darker, they appear um, maybe more ominous. I'm going to throw more cards on you for you. Oh, wow. There's a lot going on with you. Look at this. Look at how similar these cards are. So this is basically the Pope, right? And look at how similar, they're both sitting between the um, pillars of Solomon, right? But in the beginning, it's the dark and the light, it's the incorporation of the dark and the light, and now it comes into both light. This is about, I mean, this could be about um, institutions, any institution, like uh, government, medicine, law, uh, religion, um, family, academia, corporations, blah, 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 blah. The higher point of this card is really about spiritual illumination. So I feel like the light is revealed, right? And it seems like the tower happened because he was stuck. There's something about this card. He has a lot of interpretations, but on, on certain levels, he is kind of stuck in the mud. He doesn't really move. Maybe there wasn't enough room for movement. Maybe there wasn't, it didn't, you know, knights in general are about action, right? He is the only knight that's standing still. They're, the swords and the wands are moving really fast, especially the swords. And then the, the cups, one leg is lifted. So you can see, well, you know, one of the, he's going to move. This one doesn't move. So maybe there was something, some stuck energy in terms of money, in terms of security, in terms of health that needed a, a, a shake up, a slap across the face though, like water over the head, like a bucket full of water over the head. So it's like that. And, you know, you might be going down that road of, oh, Do you make those sounds in the apartment? I make those sounds in the apartment, even before COVID. I, I kind of entertain myself with all kinds of strange sounds. Um, this is karma on a grand scale. This is karma on a grand scale. That's what's going on. This is like the wheel of destiny is coming through. Maybe you can't see it, but that's what's going on. So whatever this catas catastrophic disruption was, it was all for your highest good and highest healing. It was all for, um, uh, for you to learn the lesson. Sometimes our souls step in and um, shake us up and push us in the water 
or whatever, you know, metaphor you want to use to like, wake us up, wake up, wake up. It's time for a change. Like, wake up, time for a change. Let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Yeah, don't refuse. Don't be stubborn. Don't be stubborn. You know, you're strong enough. It's, it's healing. Eventually, it's going to bring you a healing. So don't fight what's out there. Don't fight, oh, I lost my job, I like this relationship is over, whatever it is. Don't, it, you know, it might not seem like it in the middle of it, but actually it's exactly the way it was supposed to be. And um, there's going to be a movement into um, wholeness. There's gonna be a movement into wholeness from it. Okay, so trust, like that's the way it's gonna go down. Trust that, you know, trust that it's all gonna be okay. And you also, you have the higher wisdom. Tune into the higher wisdom. Tune into the higher wisdom. And, um, you know, Sometimes life gets messy. Sometimes life gets messier. It's always messy. <laughs> Sometimes it gets messier. And it's like, oh, well, you know, uh, we were redoing this, but like now that the roof fell in, it's like, oh, now I can build what I want. You know, look at it like that. It's, it's a big transformation. So embrace it. Embrace it. Blessings. <laughs>